everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to render your motion graphics in a proper way so you can use them in your YouTube videos and in your short films. Alright, so what you see right now awesome people is a classic case of banding problems in Adobe After Effects. Now before I get started with the tutorial, let me just say something that awesome people, because of my screen recording program, you guys cannot see the detail that are there on my screen and in my composition. So the best way to understand what's happening in this tutorial video is to download the project files that I'm going to give you, the link in the description. Uh, get the project files, open it and then follow along with the video so you can really understand what's happening and how to render your motion graphics properly. Alright, so what you see again awesome people right now on the screen is um, the banding problem. Now what is a banding problem? Well, when you're using a gradient ramp effect, you're going to get lots and lots of circles and every circle is going to be in a different shade and that's how the gradient is going to be created. Now a lot of people have their own techniques uh, of getting rid of this. Sometimes they use blur, sometimes they increase the bitrate and all of those work. But I'm going to give you a very different uh, way and I'm going to show you how to render this properly because without that proper knowledge this is going to come back. Okay, so the most easiest way awesome people, no blur, no, no bitrate increase is just go to gradient ramp, increase the ramp scatter from 0 all the way up to 100. Now if you were to do this in your After Effects, you can see that the scattering or the banding or the circles just basically go away completely. You cannot find them anywhere and this looks perfect. So you can start your work now. Okay, just increase the ramp scatter from 0 to 7500, 150 is supposed to be a good setting. Do that and you can start working. But now awesome people, the problem is that if you were to render this and you don't render it properly, that banding problem or those circles are going to come back. So let me show you how to deal with that now. So say you, you have temporarily fixed this problem and you start working, okay? You have created your beautiful animation and now awesome people, you want to do a final output. Now a lot of people that I know would do something like this. They would put this to the render queue and they would render it in H.264. Awesome people, H.264 is gonna compress the living hell out of your work okay the colors are gonna, are gonna go bad if you are working with a client or some people and you want to give them a final output or you're using my free templates for an intro and you want to get rid of those circular effects the best way to get rid of them or some people is to use a format called quicktime okay and in quicktime or some people go to format options and make sure that your video codec is from photo jpeg or any of these names to animation this is very very important because photo jpeg or I, i'm gonna get to that a bit later uh, but the best thing awesome people would be animation now the only problem with this setting this whole setup is that the file size that the that it's gonna give you is gonna be humongous like for example uh, we have two file sizes right now actually two files right now this is a quick time quick time uh, animation video codec and this is the normal H.264. If you were to play H.264, you can see awesome people that the color is just faded out. You can see that the background still has those circles. If you are, if you have rendered this and you're playing it side by side with QuickTime, you can see that the background is all having that, you know, dirty, bad data. And on the other hand, awesome people, the QuickTime has much better colors. And in the background, there is absolutely no banding whatsoever. But the other or, or the bad side of QuickTime Awesome People is that if you were to look at the file sizes, you can see that the QuickTime file, the QuickTime animation file is 131 MB and on the other hand, H.264 file is only 1.1 MB. So this is literally 100 times more uh, or actually 100 times bigger than H.264. So that's a bad part. So I would say Awesome People that if you're working with your client and you want to send them a demo uh, you know output or a preview output I would say that go for s264 just tell them that the banding can be fixed okay and you in, in the final output it would be fixed just uh, look at all the other an elements just tell them to look at the text animation or the other stuff of animation and just to look away from the gradient background because that can be fixed so again s264 is going to give you a very small file size and this is super for sending in emails uploading to Google Drive, your client can download it faster over there and preview it without any. Uh, again, on the other hand, QuickTime, excellent, excellent, excellent results, superb color, no banding whatsoever. Uh, the only problem is that it's going to create a very big file. This is going to be a bit of a problem for you guys to send to your client, especially when you're working overseas. So I've had uh, clients that 
you know, I, I'm in India, I'm, I'm in India, uh, who are from USA and Canada. So sending them these files were a problem and you can definitely charge for this. Make sure you do that too. Yeah, you know, money, money comes first. Okay, anyways, um, some of you guys may still be thinking that, okay, this is good, okay? Now, when you start working on something really, really heavy, say a particle system, you're working with particular um, and lower thirds and, uh, you know, typography videos, and you render it in quick time animation, and the file size is 10 GB, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 GB. Now, there is absolutely no way I can send that sort of file to my client. So, what do you do? Now, you're going to need something, also, awesome people, which can still compress the file size and still give me excellent colors and excellent results the best video codec now we are still going to go with quicktime okay i'm not going to use anything else i'm still going to use quicktime but this time awesome people i'm going to go with video codec click on format options go to video codec and select photo jpeg this is sort of like best of both worlds but still awesome people the quality is going to take a hit okay the or the quality is going to go a little down you are still going to maintain the colors but the banding problem is going to come with this. It's going to be very soft. Actually, I've already rendered this out for you guys, all my awesome people. You can see, I, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but the banding is still there. I, I would recommend that if you were to render this in a photo JPEG format, render this. You can see that the banding is still there, but it's very soft now and the colors are preserved. So again, and the file size awesome people for photo JPEG is only 20 MB. So we we bought this about one sixth of the QuickTime animation file size, one sixth of its file size. So you know it's it's, it's a great format, great, great codec. It gives you best of both worlds. Uh, but the banding, you know, the quality basically is still gonna take a bit of a hit. So free template, QuickTime animation, client uh, final output, QuickTime animation. If you cannot do QuickTime animation, then go for Photo JPEG. And in the case of a preview file, a demo file, go for H.264. So that was my tutorial on how to work with uh, motion graphics, how to render them and how to get rid of the banding problem in Adobe After Effects. I hope I'll you guys good. learned something today. I hope you guys understood. And my name is CJ Style. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to Zengen Learning. Like my Facebook page, link in the description. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. You guys take care. Peace.